Hello, hello, everybody. Ooh, I've got to plug my stuff in. Hold on. We don't want to lose a battery charge. All right. Stay tuned. Just making sure all of the cables are hooked up accordingly. Let's see. Down just a little bit. All right. making all of my final adjustments. Let's see, adjustments. Hello, Elizabeth. All right, that's pretty good. My craft mat is a little bit more congested than it usually is today, I apologize. I'm working on getting things cleaned off. All right, let's pull up. I'm gonna, ooh, I gotta turn my sound off. All right, hello, Elizabeth and Alyssa and Patsy. I hope you all are having a wonderful evening. And I am going back and forth between my laptop and my iPad because my iPad prompted me 10 minutes ago to say they had a software update. And I'm like, you know what, I probably better do it so we don't have any glitches. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do that, and we're gonna have some crafty fun. So. I wanted to pull out, so I'm actually using a set that is, I don't want to say new to me because I've owned it for a chunk of time, but we're going to use the Stick It stamp set tonight. And <laughs> I had a specific reason, and that is, this is one of the few sets on the Kindred Stamps website that is like half off right now. There's, there's a couple sets with some discounts. I don't know if any of them go beyond 50% off, but the Stick It stamp set right now is $3.99, as opposed to the normal uh, three by four size of $7.99. Is it seven or eight? I think it's $7.99. So I wanted to give it a little bit of love because I hadn't used it yet, and I thought it would be fun to make a card with y'all. So we're gonna do that. But what I wanted to do first was is I wanted to actually work on a background. And I said in my preview that I wanted to have some fun with card layouts. And one thing that I always find to be fun is making a spotlight. So I figured, why don't we go ahead and do that? So I've got a die cut of some blending cardstock, and this die cut is the rectangle die that's stitched from the Card Basic stamp set. And I'm gonna show you how you can go ahead and make a spotlight. So I have, what's gonna be very important is some low tack tape to begin with. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna line this all up and I wanna figure out how wide I want my spotlight to be. And I wanna say, let's do it. I'm going an inch and a quarter from the center and then I want it to go, I'm using my glass mat as a little bit of a guide and we're gonna use the crisscross point as just one of my intersections above the card. So I'm using this one right here. And right now it just kind of looks like tape on a piece of paper, but you're gonna see what it's going to amount to in a second. So as you can see, I did the tape. This is, so from the center, it's an inch and a quarter, and I'm gonna replicate it on the other side. Oh, and now my tape's running out. Phooey. All right, so I'm going to do an inch and a quarter. And then I'm gonna bring it up. See, now you're gonna give me a hard time. The first one's always the easy one. So we're gonna do it just like that. So this should be a pretty easy sort of spotlight effect. Now I am hoping that my sentiment's going to fit. Oh, we'll play around with this because realistically it should be a little wider, but I don't want a huge spotlight. So I will figure it out. So let's go in and do a little bit of ink blending for our spotlight. So I'm gonna start with some mustard seed distress oxide ink. And we're just gonna ink up our ink blender. And I'm gonna do the mustard seed just at the top like this. Cause I thought that the light should be the strongest near the light source, which would be like this crisscross up here is the light source. So that's what we're gonna do for some mustard seed. Next, we're gonna go on to some squeezed lemonade. 
just kind of lightening it up. I also am really excited tonight because I picked a very bold color palette and it includes yellows and but it also includes some other very bold colors so I'm excited to craft with that tonight. I don't really have a word for it yet but let's just say where my mind goes first is this color palette kind of reminds me of Fiesta Wear. Let's do some antique linen which is like a very faint yellowy beige color. like this. Perfect. All right. So we've got the main part of our spotlight. So let's do a little bit of a reveal. So as you can see, I've got a really nice spotlight effect on my card that's pretty even. Like it basically cuts my card into like what looks like we'll say three equal section or three very similarly sized sections. But next, I want to color this. I don't want white as that other color. I want to do a blue, oh no, it's like a coral color. So let's go ahead. Oh, Alyssa loves Fiesta wear. You know what, I do too, I am. I love those sort of classic dishes that like some people could call vintage, but like Fiesta Wear and Pyrex, I'm such a huge sucker for. Just my favorites. I actually have a vintage Pyrex collection and my mom and my mother-in-law both know how much I love it. So they have a tendency once in a while to sneak a um, some sort of a piece of, uh, Pyrex that's vintage into my collection and I love it. So, all right, we're gonna go in with some abandoned coral. And then I'm just gonna go in, I don't know, it's okay. All right, and then let's go. And then I want to go in with my next color, which is Ripe Persimmon. And just to give this a little bit more of an orangey coral color. I have thoughts. I do want to do some bleach marks. So let's go ahead. What am I going to use to block some water? I don't really need that much. Let me grab a piece of scrap paper from my stash. So I'm just going to go ahead like this and I'm going to use some water. Let's go ahead and pick it up with our craft towel. Now I like to use water with oxides because they're water reactive uh, inks and you get really nice bleach marks. Perfect, just like that. Now, what I also want to do is I wanna do some stencil work. And I wanna do it now. So let's go ahead. I have an idea for how I wanna apply this. So we're gonna get this nice and centered. And I wanna create kind of like a hinge. And you're gonna see why in a second. Cause I'm gonna kind of be working back and forth a little bit. So, okay, so we're gonna just go like this. And then let's also tack down that other side. Okay, so I'm gonna try my best. This is the dancing water stencil. We're going to use this just on this side of the stencil right now. So let's go in. I'm going to grab some abandoned coral distress oxide ink. 
should probably move all of my little blending tools. So we're gonna go in with some abandoned coral. Just go in like this. Just like this. Go ahead. Oh, I said I wanted to make a hinge. That's okay. I know how I can work around it. So we're going to go ahead, peel off this part of our spotlight. And we're like halfway done with the main panel of our card. I want to go ahead, let me grab some fresh tape. You know what? I'm probably going to clean up my mat too, just because it's a little messy. Hello, Carrie. Hope you're having a good night, uh, night up in Canada. Alyssa, you live where the, uh, near the Fiesta Wear factory. Oh my goodness. I love a good tent sale. So where I live, we used to have Wilton. I don't know if you're familiar. This is not bakeware, but the, well, this is not like dinnerware, but this is like baking stuff. But I used to live in the town. Why well, I live in the town where it used to be. Wilton is a bakeware company and they make a bunch of like cake pans and they do sprinkles and decorative things. Um, and they used to uh, once a year do the Wilton tent sale. So I love a good tent sale. Or if you've got like a good furniture store near you. Oh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. So what I'm trying to tell you is, Alyssa, is I'm very jealous. Because I do understand and appreciate a good tent sale. All right, let's go in. Just make sure this is nice and clean. I actually think I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with a heat gun just because I can see that that distress ink is sitting on top and it's a little wet. and get it nice and dry. And this is gonna help prevent any smears as well. All right. Perfect. We're like two thirds of our panel ready to go. So let's do, I've got some more mint tape. And we're gonna mask off to reveal the right side of this card. All right, so let's see. So I'm just kind of working it to mask off over here. You know, that's one thing that does always drive me a little nuts is that when you mask, when you do a tape on top of like an oxide ink, it kind of needs to be pressed down because the tape sort of doesn't allow, the tape doesn't stick very well to ink surfaces when it's like chalky like an oxide is. There we go. All right, let's go in with some more abandoned coral. Just like this. All right. It's kind of interesting because you can see how much we end up doing just by some ink blending. I mean, realistically, we were going from white to this, so. Thank you, Flower. I think these are really pretty colors, too. All right, let's see. So this is that right persimmon. Sorry about my messy workstation. It's one of those days. I know we all have them. At least I would like to think we do. If someone doesn't, you are doing life very well. All right. 
And that's not to say those of us who have messy stations are not doing life well. But I always appreciate someone who can stay organized. All right. Perfect. Let's go in. Let's cover up that so I can do my water bleaching. All right. Just kind of wait a second or so. Just the longer you let the water sit, the more that bleaching thing will act, bleaching thing, that sort of technique of bleaching your paper, the longer the water sits, the stronger the bleach marks will be. All right. There we go. Perfect. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I have my stencil and I need to get a little bit more tape. And I said I was gonna do that hinge effect and guess what, I totally forgot about it. That's okay, that's okay. We're, we're thriving and surviving over here. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line up my stencil. You know what, I think, I, no, it was this way. Let's see what we got. Just kind of put it back on top like this. All right. All right. Perfect. And then we're going to go in with our abandoned coral. We're just going to go in just like this. Here I am forgetting we still have a whole image to color up together. That's okay. All right. So now let's go ahead and do a peel reveal. It's a little splotchy on the top. That's okay. All right. Yeah, it's pretty good. Nothing an enamel dot or two won't cover. All right, let's go in with some sparkle silk. You know, we should probably heat set this first. That's kind of redundant. All right, let's do it though. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Elizabeth says, that's my area when it's not messy. You know what? As creators, we are all entitled to a good mess. All right. So I'm going to show you guys just, I like to point out when I make something and there are imperfections and what you can do about it or not do about it at all because it's entirely A-OK -okay however your projects turn out. But if you want to compare, ooh, ooh, we don't want to splotch. Okay, okay, we're good. So if you look at the left side, I have some really clean lines when it comes to the stencil. But when you go over to the right side, it gets a little bit more wonky. I believe the reason for that is because when I heat set the ink on the left side, heating your paper can tend to warp it. And when you warp your paper, it can be hard when you're applying a stencil over it for the paper to lie flat. So I didn't really take that into account. And as you can see, there's a little bit of splotchiness. It's really not a problem. Um, I'm gonna do some splatters, which always helps cover up imperfections, but so do enamel dots and embellishments. So don't be discouraged if it doesn't turn out perfect. And always remember too, you're probably one of the few peoples, if any at all, that are gonna know that there's something about your card that you were intending to happen. So I'm going in with that sparkle silk. And this is just like a liquid, I don't wanna call it a watercolor, but it comes in almost like a, a nail polish applicator bottle. And it's just these like glitter splatters. It's like clear liquid with glitter that you can splatter onto your paper. It's by Spellbinders and it just adds a really nice sort of feel. So there we go. All right. 
Is that heating tool the same as an embossing gun? I don't think so. This is the Ranger Heated Craft Tool. I've never used this for a heat gun purpose because it's just one setting. It just turns on and it's just like a light sort of general blowing to help with paper drying. I also have at my craft desk, I have this Wagner heat gun. I use this for heat embossing because it's got a more dedicated tip to it. Um, so I have both plugged in, ready at any time. Unnecessary, possibly, but when you start to realize how some different tools work and you're starting to recognize different parts of your crafting where you're gonna use one over the other, I never think it's a terrible idea to invest in those opportunities if you are able to. I mean, we never have to because there's always going to be some form of a workaround or we're crafty people. We can always find a DIY sort of attempt to fix our needs, but sometimes it's nice to have different dedicated tools for, uh, for different tasks. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to set this off to the side and let's get into some coloring. So I do have my image all colored up. Well, not colored up, all stamped out and ready to go. Um, but I did cut it out in advance using my scanning cut because I wanted to make sure that I was not having all these white areas between the streamers. So that was just something I wanted to do. And let's get into a little crafting with coloring. So let's go in, can I zoom in at all? There we go. That's better. All right, so we're gonna go in. I'm gonna do some E04. And I am using my Copic markers. I'm hoping this is the right paper, I think it is. If it's not, no deal. So I'm just kind of tracing where there would be a shadow. Just like that. All right, yeah, because we're gonna do her, her leggings, we're gonna give those a leggings color. We're not gonna leave them to be skin tone color. I thought that that was a good design choice, but I am gonna make our girl a little on the tanner side. So we're gonna do some E13. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna do some E11. Oh, y'all, while I'm coloring, let's just like vent for a, sec a second. Not to bring personal stuff into it, but and I'm, I'm going to also preface with, I'm fine. Some work days, man, some days just really get you together. And today was one of those days. So I'm glad to be home with my husband and my fur kids and crafting with y'all because oh, some days are just a little on the rough side and you forget sometimes that at its core we craft because it makes us happy that's that's what it should be doing and so even i'm just thinking to myself like i'm gonna twirl my baton too i'm gonna twirl my streamers and we're just gonna, we're gonna get on with it, you know? One of those days. So E21. Now don't forget, this is the Stick It stamp set. It is currently available on the Kindred Stamps website. It's actually half off right now, like I was saying earlier. Um, typically, now, now don't get me wrong, every once in a while, Audra sneaks in an unexpected restock that we all get very excited over. Speaking of which, if you didn't check out, there are two brand new stamp sets coming to the shop that are part of our Kindred birthday celebration. So be sure to check that out for the Playtime and the Wildlife stamp sets. I love them both. I think you will too. 
Um, but usually when a stamp set is marked down, that means it's probably getting ready to depart the Kindred Stamps website sometime soon. Um, so I don't know once this one sells out if you're going to be able to grab it again. But if you know anybody who, any girl in your life that is in gymnastics, love gymnastics, or you have a friend who like, when they're going to be watching the Olympics later this summer, you know for sure they're going to be tuning in to watch the Olympics. This is a great stamp set for them, especially for that discounted $3.99 price point. So just something to keep in mind. Maybe if you're going to go ahead and order those new sets tomorrow, let's stick it sneak into your cart. It's going to cost less than shipping. So something to think about. If you like it, you know, don't get it if you're not going to use it. You know what? I say that, but sometimes I buy things and I don't think about the next time I'm going to use it. I just think about how cute it is. All right, I digress. Flower, the scan and cut is so cool. You want one eventually? And she says, yes, twirl on. Absolutely. We're going to twirl on. You know what, Flower? I, this is the first time I broke out my scan and cut. And I'm going to be honest, at least a year. I don't think I've broken it out anytime recently. So I kind of had to get it adjusted to it. I may have accidentally broken off one of the hinges. That's okay. We, we're, we're, we're surviving and thriving today. That's the theme. Or we're twirling on. Twirl that baton. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you tell that I'm just trying to put a happy face on? Oh my goodness. That's okay, that's okay. We have days like this. We are human beings. All right, you want three. I'm very excited that once I'm done coloring her up though, that I'm just gonna be able to like remove the tape and she not have to cut her out. But this is like the perfect sort of image that if you don't have coordinating dyes, because of all the inner pieces, it's like the perfect one to use a scan and cut for. If you have one, if you don't, like I'm saying, we are all resourceful, crafty folk, and we will come up with a solution. All right, E11. Crevices. Perfect. All right. Next, let's do E21, which is soft sun. All right, let's do a little bit of blush too. So we're gonna do some R22. Just kind of bring that in down the cheek. Make her all rosy. She's working up a sweat, twirling her baton or stream or whatever we wanna call it. Ribbon, she twirls her ribbon. I want, I want a sentiment that says, girl, just twirl your ribbon. to zero just kind of bringing out that blush usually people don't have cheeks this rosy unless they're outside during cold weather but we stand a good blush in this household over here in this house of kindred we stand a good blush Things, but they're crafty related, of course. So I recently invested 
in the, we'll call them the bullet tip Spectrum Noir because I don't have any bullet tip Copics. All of mine have the brush tips. So I bought a 24 pack of the Spectrum Noir bullet nib uh, tri-blends. Y'all, I feel like I'm like back in school and I'm on a learning curve because I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, but we will get there. We, we will get there. I'm trying to be versatile in my coloring. Let's do some RB34. And I'm like, y'all, I can do this. I can do this. Let's do some RB32. I will check comments in a second. I have this set, and when I use her, I was going to stamp. Oh, a circle dyer. That's cute. You know what, though? With her ribbon, like, I would love to see her on a spinner card. When, you know, when you open it and it, like, spins because it's on, like, a circle die. If that's not what you meant, Alyssa, don't worry. I Whatever I'm sure you're coming up with is a wonderful idea. Um, I would also love her on a circle and on, like, a wobbler. I think that would be really cute, too. Ideas, you know, ideas for in the future. Going back in, I color them up twice. I always say color up twice, and that allows me to get a real nice blend going. I actually used this spotlight sort of um, effect on, was it last month's release or two ago? When I did the Angel and Muse release, um, my Muse has a spotlight for her card. Here, so I'm going to do RV14 and then RV10. We're just going to go right to RV10. And what I also love, if you want to get any sort of hair practice with Copic markers, this girl is where you're going to get the most basic of practice. She has very simple hair. So go ahead and practice your hair sort of techniques. Ah, we don't want to, don't jump off, don't jump off. Okay, let's do some hair. We're gonna start with some E49. And I'm just gonna kind of create a part in her hair like that. And we're gonna make some long strokes of hair. Just like that. And then let's kind of create those strokes like that. And then do her little bun. Just like that. And we're gonna create a lot of different dimension. It's not looking super, super pretty right now, but you gotta lay down a base. And we're just gonna do some E59. And I promise it's all gonna come together. But if you do any sort of like hair swatches or whatnot, I throw this girl into the ring. She is such a good image for hair practice. All right, let's do some E5, seven. Oh, you guys are getting the side of my face in so much of this, I'm so sorry. those flicks. I love this hair. Oh, I love a good easy hair. That was not my intention when I picked her, but I'm not complaining tonight. We'll do some E55. Perfect. 
and then some E53. Last color before we start going back. Okay. Let's go back to E55. We're gonna go darker from light to dark now. This is gonna really help give some definition to these strands of hair. And because we're going from light to dark, it's not gonna really blend them. It's gonna let these darker colors sit on top of the ink and not get blended back in. So it's really gonna help you get that nice hair texture. So I always like to go first from dark to light, lay down my like my basics, and then I work from light to dark so I can really capture all of those strands and not have them blend in. And you're gonna see what I mean by that shortly. E5-9. Just sort of light flicking motions. Finish off with some E49, which is surprisingly darker than E59. Perfect. All right, we got her hair. Let's work on her garment. So her leotard and her leggings, not the tutu, are gonna be like a light coral color. So we're gonna do some R05. Actually, let's do her skirt while we're at it, too. This is some R08. Oh, we're going to need a little bit of a wash down there. That's okay. Go back in with some R05. some R02. I also wanted to make sure to choose colors that didn't make it look like she would make it. So I'm hoping these colors are dark enough. finish off with some R00. I might have to bring in something a little darker for her too, too. And that's okay. I can do that. All right, we are getting there. 
Oh, thank you so much, Diana. And hello, Carrie. All right, let me grab something a little darker. Let's see. Let's do one seven. Is that dark? How dark is our one seven? Yeah, we'll do that. that and then what's next r08 let's go over with some r05 R02. Finish off her skirt. And some R00. Just like that. All right. I just have her ribbon left and I wanted to go like a darker sort of like a teal color. So we're gonna do BG18. Coloring everything in. All right, next let's go in, let's do some BG13. her little strappies and her little slippers just so they're all kind of a little color coordinating all right let's do with some bg32 hello ava diana i'm reading your comment again you are so sweet for your kind words thank you so much i'm glad that my explanation of hair helps if you are looking to practice, I still stand by that. I think this image is gonna really help with your hair because you don't have to really play around with too much texture. Her hair is just kind of pulled into a bun. So I hope that sort of helps. I always like to point out images that I think are easy to practice with. Um, and I definitely consider this one of them. Because some of us are just, that's where we want to be. We want to practice. We want to, I'm always practicing, you know. People ask about practicing. And I'm like, you see every single kindred stamps thing I've ever colored up, I consider it all practice. Every single one is practice. And don't forget, your practice images can always get put on a project too. Oh, 
You don't have the BG colors. It's BG181332 and 11. I love my BG markers. I really do. All right, let's do it again. Repeat our colors. BG18. Coloring in any work twists. One thing I'm looking at this though, I don't think my scan and cut cuts as accurately as I would like it to, or as I feel I could do. But let's take into account I didn't have to cut this. So there's there are points for merit in that. and BG11. Just like that. All right. She is looking so dang cute. All right, so let's remove the tape. Da 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 da. All right, years of practice. When picking colors, how do you know what colors go? Years of practice. You wanna know what? So I came up with this color palette tonight by Googling. I knew I wanted to use aqua and I wanted to use yellow and I just Googled color palettes. Now, if you're talking specifically colors, yeah, a lot of practice when it comes to Copics. Um, I always know that with Copic markers, um, there's color families. So like I just used a lot of BG ones. Now I threw in a BG three, two, because I know it blends well. And that is from practice. But as a rule of thumb, when you're blending up with Copics, the first digit is a, so if there's a letter, one or two letters, which indicate what color family you're working with. And then it's like, well, what like overall color, like are you using reds, yellow, or yellow oranges or yellow reds. That's what it is. They're not yellow oranges. They're yellow reds. Um, but the one will indicate anything. So if you're doing like, we'll say E ones, anything that is an E one blank are like all part of the same color family. And the last digit, the smaller the digit, so the closer it is to zero, the less saturated it is, the more it is closer to nine, the darker or more saturated it is. That's a general rule of thumb. It doesn't always apply. There's a couple stinkers in there that kind of throw it off. Um, but that's kind of how I know with Copic markers about what I can blend and do, is I kind of use the rules of the different numbers that I know work together. So I hope that helps. All right, oh, thank you so much, Alyssa. All right, so we're gonna go ahead so I want to, 
I want to start kind of laying everything out. So I've got this aqua paper that I'm going to use as a frame because I had it as a scrap. I know it's going to look nice. And then we're going to have her on there. Do I want to do that with the aqua paper though? Because I almost wish I had a little bit of white. What do I want to do? What does Justin want to do? I guess that would be okay. All right, so my struggle right now is I don't like to do quarter of an inch frames. I like when they're smaller. So I'm debating right now if I want to trim down my frame so that it would be like, um, uh, like an eighth of an inch off this side and this side. I'm honestly kind of leaning towards it. So let's pull in my trimmer. Let's do that. I just cringe because it's so small to begin with, but we'll figure it out. We always do. Oh, are we going to? So let's just trim. Sorry, y'all are dealing with me with this. All right. So. I almost feel like I'm ruining my scrap. Yeah, I'm gonna have to re grab a new pair of scrap because I'm already seeing that this is a little wonky. Yeah, I'm gonna grab, let's see what I got. Let's see what I got. Oh, fooey, Justin. All right, I'm gonna grab a piece of glitter paper from my stash. I just gotta step around to the other side, not a problem. That's okay, sometimes it happens. No worries, Leanne, glad you could stop by. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna trim this down. We're gonna trim it to four and one eighth by five and three eighths. I'll save this for later. So that way I can just adhere it like that. All right, perfect, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead, use my glue press. Give me a nice thin glittery border, just like that. And we can put it, and I'll have a little bit of a white frame too from the card. Love that. So we've got our girl ready to go. Now we just have to work on a quick sentiment for her. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna do some heat embossing. I'm just gonna grab some paper. Let's see. I wanna grab like an aqua-ish paper to do my heat embossing. I might have to break into a stash of paper and that's okay. Let me go ahead and trim a little piece off. 
We'll do our sentiment in white and we'll fussy cut it out and then it will all be lovely. Thank you all for dealing with me during this time of flusterdom. That's what we'll call it. So, let's go in. And we're gonna grab our stamp set. I want the sentiment, thank you for keeping me on my toes, which is what you all are doing for me tonight and I can't thank you enough. Let's go in. All right, and then let's grab some Hydrant Stamps Embossing Ink. Like, Where's my white powder? Bossing. All right. Also, big fan of embossing tools. Any sort of an anti-static tool. I love the one that I just pulled out. There's a handful on the market, but oh, love them, love them, love them. for now. Let's put away our inks and our embossing powder. Grab a bit of water. Lovely. All right, let's wipe this off. Let's wipe this off too. Drive me nuts. All right, and then we can go ahead and let's fussy cut our sentiment out. just gonna fussy cut this out because I like the way a good fussy cut sentiment looks. This is not something I think you can do with your scan and cut unless you trace around it. That's what a lot of people say to do with a scan and cut that if you are going to have like open spaces that you don't want cut out, that you can use a pencil and sort of trace areas that you don't want cut out to kind of like block it during the scanning process and then you can erase it after the fact. Perfect. 
So let's go with some foam tape. And this part will be a little tedious. It's okay. tape is coming off, but whatever. This is not going to work for me. All right. Just do some pieces of foam tape to help hold this all up. that. Well, let's get little Miss Thing already. Let's see. Sometimes placing foam tape is such a tedious little task. Oh, and I'm going to take the backing off all this too. Lord, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, we're getting there, we're getting there. Name of the powder you used prior to using the Versamark. Oh, it's um, it's a tailored expression tool. I don't know what it's called exactly, but it's their version of a embossing anti-static tool. Hope that helps you out, Kristen. And then also too, just because I think it's worth pointing out, I actually, I didn't use Versamark ink. Kindred Stamps has our own embossing ink, so I use some of that. But I mean, of course, it, it functions the same as a good watermark ink, so totally understood. Let's see what we got. We're just kind of making sure that everything is nice and centered. Take all the tape off, the backing off our baton girl. And I know it's not a baton, it's a streamer, but. All right, two pieces left. Oh, 
she is a finicky one. I think that's where I want her. Just like that. All right, she is looking adorable. Let's finish off. I've got some enamel dots pulled over to the side that I think would look really cute. I said I would do some up here just to sort of detract from any splotches. This is the dancing water stencil. Diana, which, uh, Diana says, what light ink do you use to stamp your images? I use the Blackout Ink by Ink on 3. It's my go-to. I love it. I don't use anything else, honestly. Um, it just gives me really nice, crisp images that dries quickly and doesn't stain my stamps. It checks all of my boxes. So there we go. We have our project all taken care of using the Stick It stamp set. We did a fun highlight of uh, spotlight technique that I had showed us how to do early in the live tonight. Ooh, it is off camera. That is a okay. Sorry about that. Um, but here you go. I will make sure to photograph this, get it into the fan club later on. Probably tomorrow is my thought. Um, but yeah, thank you all so very much for being here tonight on this Thursday night. I will be back live next week, Saturday. So you'll get me a, a double dose of me this month as always. Um, and if you have any questions about my project, please feel free to reach out. Um, thank you all so, so very much for being here tonight. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you, Flower. Thank you, Diana and Julie and Leanne. You guys are all wonderful, and I appreciate you so, so very much for being here. Have a wonderful rest of your Thursday night. I've got a pizza that is going to be calling my name in a couple minutes that I'm also very excited for and some R&R &R with the television. So have a great night, everyone. I will catch you very soon. Goodbye.